As I studied with Joe Allard over a 15-year period, I gained a new concept of vibrato. And this, this really uh, speaks to the French school of classical saxophone playing. Uh, Joe taught me vibrato uh, as a part of the sound, that is, within the sound rather than without the sound. So vibrato within the sound. Vibrato without the sound. Vibrato there is not a part of the sound. It is indeed below the pitch. Here is how Joe taught me vibrato. First, he had me find the center of the pitch, because that is the richest part of the sound. If you envision the sound as an eclipse, and try to find the center of the eclipse. And I like to talk about the sound as an eclipse because the center then of the eclipse is the widest and thus, the, in my mind, the richest sound. So what you do is first you play as high as you can on the pitch, then you play as low as you can on the pitch, then you find the middle, like this. Find the middle of the pitch first. And the middle of the pitch is where you should play. That is, if you're biting too hard, we talked about how hard to bite or not bite earlier. If you're biting at 9 or 10, as hard as you can bite, you're going to be playing at the top of the pitch. If you're biting at 1 or 2, you're going to be playing at the bottom of the pitch. It should be somewhere around uh, 4. That's the middle of the pitch. You have to find the middle of the pitch, and you find it in that way that I just showed you. Once you have the middle of the pitch, now, mind you, before I go further, you want the vibrato to sound like you are going from the middle of the pitch, above, back to the middle and then below the pitch, and then back to the middle again and above the pitch. Actually, if you actually do that, physically do that, find the middle and go above and below, it's going to sound like this. And I'll start it slowly and then speed it up. Here's, here's, I'll, first I'll find the middle. Now I'm going to start in the middle, go above and below, and above and below. What happens is you end up only hearing the bottom part. The bottom, when you go below, that's all you hear. You don't hear the above part because we, we have this big conical instrument, the saxophone, and a very large reed as well. So acoustically, that's what happens. In order to produce this vibrato, we actually start in the middle of the pitch, go above the pitch and back to the middle, above and back to the middle, never physically going below. It will sound like you are going above and below. I will demonstrate this sl slowly. Thus, when you go from the middle of the pitch, above and back to the middle, it sounds like you are going above, below, above, below. That's how you can uh, uh, play vibrato within the sound, as a part of the sound. Now, Joe Allard also taught me a valuable lesson about the speed of the vibrato. How fast should it go? Actually, I learned this from a good friend of mine in the West Point band also named Marshall Taylor. Marshall had just come back from studying with the great Maitre and, and, and the, the maybe the best classical saxophone player ever, Marcel Neu, who I knew and revered. And Marcel Mule had this to say about the speed of the vibrato. 300 
is the magic number. You divide the pulse into 300 and get the result. Thus, if a quarter note equal, if the quarter note equals 76, you divide 76 into 300, you have to round off and you get 4. Thus, every quarter note would get 4 pulsations, something like this. If you divide 60 into 300, you'd get 5. Thus, every quarter note would get 5 pulsations. And so on and so forth. This really has the effect of keeping the vibrato the same speed all the time. That is part of the French school of classical saxophone playing. So, uh, earlier, I played some of the Concertino da Camera by Jacques Ibert. The vibrato should be based on the pulse, not the fact that the Concertino da Camera first movement it has fast notes. And here's what should happen. <laughs> About four pulsations per beat. Many players play it like this. For me, that's not correct. Rather, this is correct. I don't want to get into a master class on the Concertina da Camera by Eber, but Joe Allard also taught me how to tongue on the e-bear. Many players play it like this. That's the way I played it when I went to Joe Allard. Joe talked to me how violinists and cellists and violists, when they're playing uh, Telemann or Vivaldi and they have moving 16 notes, would play do dee do 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 And he taught me to do that kind of tonguing. On the e-bear, I use that as well. So on and so forth. Uh, maybe I'll go into circuit of breathing here too for a minute. Anyway, uh, that's a little bit about the speed of the vibrato. 300 is the magic number.